is it collaborative? Is it like, all right, this has been like handed down like the Ten Commandments and now I need to recite it word for word? Or do you have a little flexibility? Th thankfully for, for me, it's not like that. And it's not like that for, for this guy either. Um, <laughs> where where we get a promo and sometimes, well, sometimes there'll be lines in it, right? And and so um, that, that you have to hit. Um, and they'll often, often be the, the lines that you're like, that doesn't sound like she would say that. But, um, but for the most part, it's, it's, we've gotten to the point where we've gotten enough equity and we've gotten enough trust that, you know, we get to write our own promos. And, and you know, it's, it's usually a collaborative process where um, if I'm comfortable with my writer, but, well, what do you think of this? And, you know, I feel like it's got to hit more. And um, I think we could, we could do more with this. And, um, and a lot of the times, you know, they, they'll come up with a good line and then it's, it's, it's a bit collaborative that way when you've gotten that equity. But I think when you first come up, like first, when I first came up, I was too scared to say anything, anything out of turn. I was like, oh, these are the words on the page. I must say every single word exactly as it is on the page. Thankfully, it's not like that anymore. Yeah, no, I know. What? Uh, oh, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say, man, your book is, is so good and it's so funny and it's so well written. And so thank you, by the way, for sharing it with me and, and for letting me be one of the first people to, to read it because I'm not the fastest reader in the world, but I read that in a matter of days. Like, and I, I was trying to avoid texting you all the time to be like LMAO or whatever it was, but just like, oh yes, this is brilliant, this is brilliant, because every chapter was so good. And I am just, my mind is blown by how well you remembered everything. Like there's so many great, hilarious stories that you tell so well and so vividly. And and the fact that you you had such a, a long, detailed story career and were able to remember everything is just, is just mind boggling to me. I don't know how you did it. Especially because I feel like sometimes when we're on the go so much that stories start to blend into each other, certainly for me. Yeah. And the fact that you were able to do it and, and write that book so well is just amazing. No, I appreciate it. You know, like, as I've been saying, uh, there's a lot, there's so much stuff I don't remember. And so many times people are like, oh, do you remember when, you know, we did that thing back in St. Louis in, you know, 2007? Like, no idea. No idea what you're talking about. But the stuff I do remember, I remember really, really well, you know, because I've been telling the stories for so long and doing this. And by the way, I don't know, I, I did, did The Rock just come on the chat? and suggest me and him versus you and Seth at WrestleMania because, you know, Did that he would be, just do that? I, just, I don't, I don't know. I, I might have seen it. It's flashing by. I'm so, I'm self-conscious. I want to make sure the book's in the frame. I want to make sure my Met hat is on right. But I thought I saw it for a second. Um, and yeah, that would be, that would be oh. a, a, a horrifically oh. bad idea, but I definitely appreciate the sound. Oh shit, there it is. Rock and Brian. <laughs> Versus Becky and Seth. All right, I'm down. I'm down. You know who's taking the heat in that match? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll, uh, I'll psych myself up for the hot tag. You know, from from Rock. You know, you, do, you get the heat, you get your heat on Rock. He'll tag me in. You got me in silence from you know all of SoFi Stadium or or you know whatever the name of the field is. And uh, yeah, we go home because if I get tagged in, we need to go home. Like immediately, <laughs> there's no if fans or butts about it. Um, yeah, I think that would be a main event in any arena. That would be um, so just three Certainly quarters so fun. approved and one fourth so awkward and disappointing. I'd rather stick to me versus Instagram because you know I have <laughs> at least you know some history behind that. <laughs> but yeah, that would be that would be very cool. I, I would <laughs> you know. I didn't think I'd be doing podcasts. I never in my life thought I'd be doing Instagram live, um, considering I'm not in, on Instagram. So, you know, if that's, that would be fun. That would be funny if that was like The Rocks, you know, calling WWE and was like, I got good news and bad news. Good news is I'm in for mania. Bad news <laughs> is it needs to like be this very specific match. You know, you remember, of course, everyone remembers WrestleMania 10, Bam Bam and Luna versus Doink and Dink. Well, here is the modern day version of that. 
here is the match that will bring so many <laughs> memories of that classic, you know, whatever it is, 29 years later. Um, you know, <laughs> can't wait for it. Hell yeah. I'm down. At least yeah. now we know we're booked. Yeah. We're, we're booked. Yeah, there you go. If Dwayne says we're booked, we're booked. <laughs> yeah, if you, if you, that's right. No, that's half the battle right there, is getting booked. <laughs> This is, yeah, this is so surreal. Like, um, you know, these, these stories, I remember texting with you uh, when I first started this process in 2020. Um, <laughs> Karen D, Rock does the job for Seth. Yeah, well, that would be, that would, that would be a finish that they would not be expecting. I'll say that much. Um, <laughs> that would, yeah, main event in any arena across the country. Um, but I remember texting with you and you know, we were each kind of like giving each other advice in terms of like, you know, you're talking to me about the pandemic era shows and performing in front of no crowd, which had to have been very, very weird. Um, and, and, you know, me floating book ideas and stories and stuff like that by you. So I'm really glad we were able to work together on SmackDown and just continue, you know, the, the, the relationship and continue like, you know, being in touch and everything after that, because, uh, oh. Well, you know, for real, because I've seen your Twitter and I don't want to get on your bad side. You're absolutely <laughs> savage on that. I saw, I remember <laughs> leading the building to Rhonda and poor Ronnie and Flair and Charlotte. I was like, you need to be friends with this person. <laughs> well, you know, like you, you even say it in your book, you know, if it, uh, if it, if it, sure, it might ruffle some feathers, but if it gets the audience excited and if it makes money, well, then. All fair game, right? Oh yeah, I, that's yeah. That's, I, I think it's in the book. You know, if, if you know if Rock is watching, there's so many times, you know, uh, you know Jerry Briscoe, uh, bless his heart, he he's a friend, but I, I'm I'm surprised he is a friend of mine because there's so many times I'd be sitting next to him or Billy Kidman, and they'd have their stopwatch, and the promo is scheduled for like 15 minutes, and the rock music hits, and he goes out there. And he's like going to both sides of the, you know, the stage. And then he gets in the ring and it's like, Jerry's like, is he going to start talking, Brian? I'm like, no. <laughs> any second? 15 minutes, seven minutes has already come up. He hasn't even said anything, you know? And then the promo would go, you know, maybe 10, 15 minutes heavy every time, you know? And then, you know, I would be like, you know, hey, like The Rock says, you can't rush greatness. It's going to happen. That's why... Literally every um, five seconds, if you recall, we were in you, me, Corbin, Rock, Hiram. We we're all going, you know, over the promo. Every five seconds, there would be a new WWE writer who'd knock on the door and be like, you're not going to go over time, are you? Like, this is the premiere of SmackDown. Literally every segment is timed to the absolute limit. You can't go heavy. And I'm like, well, you're going to be the one gorilla. I'm not going to be out in the crowd. It's going to be your problem, buddy. <laughs> If I recall correctly, I think we went under time. Yeah, I think we literally went two seconds under, which, which that's I, the biggest swerve we in the history under. of wrestling I, swerve. Yeah. Because I was, I, was, I was the match after. I was the match after, and we didn't lose any yeah. time. I, I believe we went under. I think we went under. Y yeah, no, we totally I'm saying did. he doesn't buy it, but I think we went under. I don't think oh, we no. went over yeah. the time. Yeah. Because that, that, that promo, that went down in history. Like the audience is buzzing, everybody's thrilled about it. Um, and, and backstage, we're all just like, we hit our time. We didn't go over. <laughs> oh, but did the, the crowd react? Who cares? The time, the time. <laughs> but you know, it was, it was great. It was, it was such a thrill, you know, to be able to, you know, you and Rock doing the, you know, doing moves in tandem. Um, yeah, I need to shut the fuck up. That's what, <laughs> well, I, I get said nervous, I talk a lot. So but he Becky said, he said, over the conversation. <laughs> he said, Brian, he said, add him. What's that? Rock said, add him. He said, stop yapping and add me. I don't oh. know how to do that. I, stuff. I, don't, I don't know how to do that. Let me see. Hold on. Hold on. I think that's your domain. That's your domain. Let me try this. This is all new. Okay. I think I did it. Does that work? Hold on. Okay. There he is. Yeah. Oh. 
<laughs> big, big party here. Big party on the Instagram today. Big party on the Instagram What's live. Up, brother? What's up, the man? <laughs> ah, Becky, What's up? Where you at right now? Dwayne, where you at? I'm at the crib, man. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, how you guys doing? Where you guys going? Going home. We got a napping baby, and so we're we're... We've been taking advantage of it by getting ice cream. Yeah. <laughs> salt, salt and straw. Actually. Salt and straw ice cream, by the way. We have nice. to try it every. We have to try all the seasonal flavors every every month. So we went and we oh. got our, we got ourselves some ice cream. Oh, now now I know. I'm gonna send you guys a shitload of salt and straw. Well, <laughs> we're gonna have to get a new freezer at the house. <laughs> gonna be we, are, we already got a bunch in the freezer right now. <laughs> Brian, what's up, man? What's up? I, I didn't know I didn't know you were asking to be added. I've never done Instagram before. <laughs> I was <laughs> fuck up and look at my thing. I'm added. I'm like adding. But it goes so fast. I don't understand it. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, the rock I think said something. And Becky's like, add the rock. I'm like, well, I always <laughs> like to add the rock to our conversation. I've been talking about him for like 20 minutes. Like, no, shut up. Literally press the button <laughs> to add the rock. You don't know what you're doing. You're 98 years old. You have no clue what's happening. But then, yeah, she explained it, and I figured it out. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, well, congrats on your book. Today's a big day. Yeah, thank you. This is it. It's it's here. I'm holding it. I got a nice endorsement from both The Rock and Becky Lynch uh, in the front and the back. It's uh, very cool. It's surreal. It's actually happening. You know, I, I remember texting Becky about it, but I first ran the idea by you and Danny, and you guys gave me your complete support on it, so thank you. Well, I mean, look, it's, it's my pleasure, and I'm sure Becky's pleasure too as well, as she's read it, she's loved the book too. I read, I haven't read the book, because I don't know how to read yet, but when I do, <laughs> I'll, I'll let you know how it is, but, um, but man, we're very happy for you, but also too, like, we're just, all of us, Seth included, just, we all know, uh, your impact that you've had on the business, man. And it's a really special thing. And I'm just really happy for you that you were able to write this book and uh, and share a lot of those crazy stories that you have back at a time when, I mean, in a way, it was like the wild, wild west when you came into town uh, before they traded company, I think, right? Yeah. It was just and all those crazy stories you were able to share, man. So I, I love the book. I think it's great. Congratulations. Thank you. Well, I have a great idea, you know, because we're going to be shooting season three of Young Rock soon. So, you know, and not in Australia this year. So if you would like before you go to bed, I could read you a chapter right before you fall asleep, you know, and that way you could just like drift, you know, into uh, sleepy time with a different chapter every day. I'm making that <laughs> offer if, you, if you're interested. Will you be in bed with me? Is that what you're offering? <laughs> well, I was thinking it would be more like, a, you know, sitting at like Fred Savage and the Princess Bride with, with Peter Falk kind of thing, but you know, uh, if you prefer it yeah. that way. Another okay. reference. Okay, great. Good. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm totally good. I read the book already. Don't need you sitting in the bedroom reading the book today. Fair, fair enough. Fair, fair Look, enough. I ha while I have you, and while, of course, you have uh, Seth and Becky here, are, are, are there any stories from the book that you think audiences right now would just love to hear not the full story, but like, like anything from the book that you want to bring up now. Cause I, there's 10 things in the book that you wrote that I was like, man, I can't believe that that should happen. Yeah. I mean, thank you. It's, it's, you know, I'm really, it's really cool that I got to, you know, tell my firsthand perspective of the three year, like biggest WrestleMania, you know, build of all time between you and John Cena, yeah. you know, you re I, I was all of a sudden turning into Chris Farley. Like, you, you remember, remember when you fought John Cena at WrestleMania? That was awesome. Um, there was, you know, that was cool. And then, you know, all the all the stuff that you know we were able to do, and they talked about, um, you know, the promo segment that we did with Becky on SmackDown Live. Share this with you really quick. You know what was really cool was when the Shield attacked me before the uh, WrestleMania, and then powerbomb me and I remember Seth I was on uh, Roman's shoulders and Seth in particular helped, threw me down so hard on that mat busted my blood vessels blood started coming up out of my uh, out of my out of, out of my mouth and I was and he looked down 
Roman looked down and was like, you okay, Uso? Call me brother and someone. I was like, and before I could answer, Seth was like, who gives it? He walked away. <laughs> <laughs> You know, this was ten years ago. I don't, I don't have a full recollection of this memory. Um, you know, we did powerbomb you twice. Once in the dark through a table, and then another time we made you bleed your own blood. Yeah. I'm not sure which one, you know, was which. There's a lot of things that happen in the heat of the moment. You know what I mean? It's, it is what it is. He it said is. he regretted nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and he would do it again tomorrow or better yet he would do it in SoFi Stadium as a tag team versus you and Brian that's what he said oh uh, and let me tell you that match for all the 30 seconds if Brian I can tell you who's gonna take the ball on that. <laughs> I don't know I've been doing squat thrusts I'm, I feel I'm uh, you know getting in, in, in you know the ring rust of lifetime ring rust is wearing off. <laughs> you know, I did, I do, I will say this, you know, you said that story about the power bomb. I did, you know, I write about it in the book too, um, you know, in a, in a time that is never, ever, this will never be replicated. You know, I think you were there uh, when we got snowed in, in, in SmackDown 2000. And we were just all like kind of futzing around the ring. And Shane was like, Brian, come in the ring. Let's do a power bomb. And Bubba Dudley took me, oh, Devon took me, like raised me up to Bubba's, you know, he was up on the second rope. Like there's a whole crowd, like thankfully this is 2000, February 2000, there's no cell phones or anything like that taking video. Um, and Shane is like, tuck your head in. I'm like, what? <laughs> and we're airborne. And yeah, Bubba powerbombed me off the second rope. Um, I did tuck my head in. I felt amazing afterwards. I felt like a world beater. <laughs> Like, <laughs> yeah, like, F, yeah, I'm, I just took a bump. And walking around the hotel, uh, you know, the, the Baltimore lobby, you know, ordering like an Amstel light or something like hardcore like that. And like really feeling, you know, my oats then. But can you imagine, like, you guys, I can't imagine like a writer taking a power bomb during rehearsal or anything like that. Just the absolute <laughs> pandemonium that would, the footage that would leak, the lawsuits is insane. <laughs> Dude. There's a few of them I'd love to give a power bomb to these days, but uh, yeah, I don't think that would fly. I don't think that shit would fly these days. <laughs> well, while I have you, Seth, you and Becky, I'll, I, I got to share this story really quickly with you guys. You guys will appreciate it. So it was like it was uh, me and Hunter. We were building to some match. I can't remember what it was. And this was, I think, this is in the book. Brian, is this in the book? Where yeah, I was it's gonna... in the book. So. We, oh, we were in Atlanta. We were opening up Atlanta for the first time. It was a stadium in Atlanta, right, Hiram? Um, Brian, I think it was. Georgia uh, Dome, yeah. We were yeah. a huge show. It was the Dome. It was the first time us, we were in a Dome. WCW had run the Dome so many times before us, so it was first time in the Dome. And we were closing out the show, and it was a big promo at the top of the show between myself and Triple H. This was the time I told Brian earlier in the day, I was like, I got an idea. You know how when Triple H talks, it, it sounds like really long-winded. And he's like, and then uh, gonna do this. Uh, my name is the game. Uh, and I was like, what if I really went in on him and <laughs> talk some really mad shit about it and just how like he bores the shit out of people. <laughs> and so Brian, so we come up with this promo on the back and I was like, <laughs> and it's the whole thing. And I, and I do him to a T. And of course that night, I think he left me laying. So I'm cool with, this kind of opening of the promo. So it's the, so now we're called to Vince's office and it's me, Brian, uh, Triple H, Vince, Stephanie. I don't know, if, was anyone else in, in there? Uh, Brad, all of Pat, DX was in there. All of DX was in there, okay, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so Brian, like he, from the moment he's like walking in the, you know, every arena. So just by being Brian, by the way, the nicest guy in the world, but a writer. So, uh, Vince was like, I said, okay, so I got this idea and uh, I'm gonna make fun of how Triple H talks. And Vince is like, oh, sounds great. <laughs> Let me hear it. And I could just see already Triple H is like. He and I were, we were buddies, but it was also very competitive. So, <laughs> so Vince would come on, Rock. Let me hear it. Let me hear the thing. I was like, okay, got it. Brian, 
<laughs> no, but you know, the best part of that was you, you built it up so well because you did everything but the voice. You were like, oh, Hunter, you're going to love this. So I come out, you guys are in the ring, you're looking at me, and I'm like, you know what, Triple H, here's what's the problem with you. Every time you open your mouth, it sounds exactly like this. Do the voice. Like, <laughs> And then you're like, yeah, you were doing it backstage. You imitated him so well. It sounded just like him. Do it. And like I see, like Hunter's ears have steam emerging from them. And DX wasn't exactly like rollicking with laughter either. They were like, the fuck? And so, yeah, so I did it. I was like, in this ring, uh, I'm the game. Uh, and I'm going to say absolutely nothing. Uh, and then, you know, you know that laugh. Vince is like, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Go ahead and do it. And then, you know, we're just like, all right, thanks, thanks. And Hunter's like, yep, okay, sure. Yeah, love it. Like, he did, he did, you know, that's when you hear Ron Howard. He did not love it. You know, it was pretty much. <laughs> it was a great promo, you know. Apologize later. It was an awesome promo. It was, it's iconic. People, you know, talk about it today. That was a good one. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Oh, that's tremendous. What about what about the Michael Hayes stories? The Michael Hayes stories are some of my favorite content in the book. I read the book as well. Becky passed it off to me. Great read. But I love Michael Hayes. He's such a character. People are familiar with the fabulous Freebirds or maybe some of the stuff he did with Edge and Christian and the Hardys. But as a human being, he's one of the most entertaining people on the planet. And so having stories with him backstage, that's like... I was loving that stuff. I love because he's, oh, he's exactly you. the same now as he was 20 years ago. So it was tremendous content. Like some of the XFL stuff was oh great. My God. Oh, just tremendous Michael Hayes stories. Yeah. I mean, thank you. Yeah. There's like, you know, the book is roughly 47% Michael Hayes stories. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the XFL, you know, that's when I termed, you know, I was texting with Becky about it. Uh, you know, the catchphrase. Hair in a tail, no need to bail. Hair undone, your ass better run. Because <laughs> hair is in a ponytail. It's professional Michael Hayes, and he's booking great matches and awesome finish. <laughs> he's booked lots of rock matches. You know, he's been awesome. Um, when it's undone, that means the beer wolves come out, and you don't know what's going to happen because it's after the show. So, yeah, there's a whole <laughs> section dedicated to the very Perfect. different 2001 XFL then the 2023 XFL, where me and Michael and Bruce were working on it. And he had such a stressful day because he had to be the bodyguard of Stephanie because they fired the sideline reporters after one night, um, <laughs> you know, and then replaced them with Stephanie, who was a heel in WWE at the time. And all the fans, she's trying to like, and it's a great night here in San Francisco. Boo! You know, that's the PG version of what they were saying. <laughs> and Michael had to guard her, and he was so worn down that, yeah, he had a little bit to drink. We played blackjack, <laughs> and yeah, I write about it. He did something I have literally never seen before, which is run out of chips and take the frightened old lady sitting next to him's chips and, <laughs> it and putting it on his own area. And I'm like, I don't think that's right, Michael. It's like, she don't mind. You don't mind, do you? And the woman's like, oh, I don't want any trouble. <laughs> no problem. They can see the dealer is just like, you know, looking very, very concerned and, and probably tapping what they have. And like when people are robbing banks, tapping the silent alarm under the blackjack table. And then Michael, of course, lost the old lady's money, too. And then he left. And then, you know, that's when uh, he, was, he was claiming I was his son all night. And like, my son don't respect me and just got up and left. <laughs> Insane. Oh, God, it's such a great book, man. You've done such an incredible, incredible job. Thank I'm you. still writing mine, and I'm really happy that when mine comes out, at least it won't be in direct competition with yours. <laughs> so well written and hilarious. I can't wait for the Becky Lynch book. That is going yeah. to be insane. Be done with that. <laughs> Whenever what, that gets done. When, when do you think you'll be done with that? Uh, hopefully in the next couple of months. Perfect. Now that I, now that I got now that I got a bad wing, I got a little bit more time to dedicate to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How's the injury coming along? 
Oh, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I feel like I've gotten a bunch more mobility in it. It, um, because when it happened, it was so painful that I was like, oh no, I'm gonna be out for a long, long time. But now it's it it's healing up real quick. I'm I'm feeling strong. I'm feeling good. So I'm hoping it won't be much time at all. Great. Cool. How's your injury? Yours? Wait. His? Uh, no, Brian. It? Brian, how's your injury? Oh, oh, I didn't. I thought you were talking to Seth. No, I'm good. I broke my finger in eighth grade, and it hasn't healed since. But you know, that's why I don't play defense in basketball. You know, that's why I, I tend to you know stay at the three point line. But yeah, it's coming along. I'm, I'm doing well. It's uh, you tell really broke it? what's that? Tell everybody how you really broke it. That is how I broke it. <laughs> I broke it going for a rebound, and the yeah, yeah, yeah. ball yeah. bent the finger back, and. Uh -huh. That is my story. I'm sticking to it. That's the real story. I don't know what is being implied here, but I assure you it is false, false narrative. Oh, man. All right. Hey, listen, uh, we should let uh, these two get back to their napping baby. Um, and before we wrap this up, please tell us in the, in the fans one time uh, and tell uh, Becky and Seth this. Goldberg, uh, who we love, that's our boy. He came into the territory uh, coming out of uh, WCW. He was the last one <laughs> who uh, came in. Uh, and he comes in, first night, we sit down. And I think this is in the book, right? So I'm not. Well, this is the inspiration to the title of the book. Oh, so yeah, it's okay. definitely in there. So we sit down at the table. And we're going to have a big promo, me, you, and him. He's going to come out. He's going to give me the big spear. That's how the show is going to end. Uh, Goldberg finally makes his debut in WWE. And then we go on to have a couple of pay-per-views. And, and he goes on to beat my ass. And then we, we, and then, uh, we do that. Uh, tell, tell everybody what happened. Uh, they're at the table. We're sitting there, promo time. Uh, and I say, yeah, Bill, we could do something like this. And then you jump in and say, yeah, it's kind of similar to... Yeah, I, uh, like, you know, it's the simplest promo you could ever have. Rock's running his mouth. I've done all there is to do. Um, I've beaten everybody. And Goldberg comes out and spears him. That's it. You know, and people anticipated this because there were signs. This was the day after Mania, after the big Rock Austin match. Um, so everyone was anticipating it. I'm like, great, you know, oh, you know what we could do? We do this great thing. You know, we did this thing with Rock and Hogan in Chicago where they're standing face to face. And they're like each looking at the crowd and it's this iconic moment. And Rock's like, yeah, we could do that. That sounds good. And then Bill's just like, yeah, there's just one problem. I ain't Hulk Hogan. <laughs> Intense stare. <laughs> Intense. And then like, Rock and I do like the little Bill, to each other. They're all through Brian. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. No. Rock and I are looking at you won't Rock and I are looking at each other like 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 Lando and Lobot in, in Empire Strikes Back after Han Solo gets frozen, just like, are you seeing this shit? Um so I knew no one would make that reference, but it, it amused me. So afterwards I said, Okay, great, you know what? No problem. Um not catching by, on. By, by the way, the when Bill said, I ain't Hulk Hogan, of course me being me, I turned to Brian and go, I fucking told you he's not Hulk Hogan. <laughs> 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 yeah. Do that. Brian's like, no, I know. I've done that. Okay, okay. I got something yeah. else. And then so not yeah, not taking a hint at all, oblivious. I go, you know what? That's no problem, Bill. This is going to be perfect because what we could do is, you could stalk him on stage. You could like have this big pacing back and forth while he's running his mouth in the ring because we did this promo with Rock and Jericho where Rock was going on and on. I could see Rock going like, I don't think it's a good idea. And then Bill's like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's just one problem. I ain't Chris Jericho. Again, intense <laughs> stare. And this, like, this literally could have gone on for hours. <laughs> is this the first like, time that you guys interacted with this man? First, this is the first time, first time I like, ever interacted, not Brian. Yeah, Brian's interacted. I, met, I saw him a few times. I just out, you know, when we were crisscrossing at, like, airports or something like that. Yeah. Uh, and then, so, but he was the very last one. And when I saw him, I saw him out in an event. And I remember we talked for a little bit and I was like, dude, I, 
I think there's a pathway here. I think you should consider coming in. We could do some big business. You're the man. And he's like, yeah, okay, I'll do it. So he came in, but he kind of came in at that time, understandably so. He had his head on a swivel, a little unsure of what was around him. You know what I mean? So, and all of a sudden he's sitting in front of Brian and Brian's hitting him with the Hogan and the Jericho. He did not have a great relationship with wrestling writers at the time. So <laughs> I understand where he's coming from. Uh, and we get along great now, but that could have been like, like literally like two hours later, like there's just one problem. I ain't George Hackenschmidt or, you know, whatever. <laughs> I ain't Haystacks Calhoun, okay? I also ain't Gorgeous George. Like, we could have gone on, like, like, what in the history of the business has there not been a confrontation that you would like to do? Because we can do that, you know? And then I watched the promo back. It was basically you kind of just, like, circling each other. And then, you know, he, he hit the spear. So thankfully, that had never been done, ever. Uh, and, you know, we satisfied Bill, we satisfied you, the audience, Vince, everybody. It worked out fine. And it gave me a title for a book. So, yeah, we got the, so uh, the, book the cover. People. Yeah. <laughs> one problem. Great. And Great book. Congrats on your book, Brian. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you very much for coming on and doing this here with me. Seth, Seth and, and, and Becky, so good to see you guys. Good to see you, man. Yeah, man. Thank you, guys. Good to, good to see everybody. And congratulations again, Brian. It's awesome. Well done. Awesome. Thank you. And now i got to figure out how to turn this off. <laughs> <All right. laughs> good luck. Go enjoy Thank that. Guys. See ya.